surface tension is the tendency of fluid surfaces to shrink into the minimum surface area possible. Surface tension allows insects e.g. water stiders, usually denser than water, to float and slide on a water surface. At liquid air interfaces, surface tension results from the greater attraction of liquid molecules to each other due to cohesion than to the molecules in the air due to adhesion. The net effect is an inward force at its surface that causes the liquid to behave as if its surface were covered with a stretched elastic membrane. Thus, the surface comes under tension from the imbalanced forces, which is probably where the term surface tension came from. Because of the relatively high attraction of water molecules to each other through a web of hydrogen bonds, water has a higher surface tension .8 mN per meter at 20 degrees Celsius than most other liquids. Surface tension is an important factor in the phenomenon of capillarity. Surface tension has the dimension of force per unit length, or of energy per unit area. The two are equivalent, but when referring to energy per unit of area, it is common to use the term surface energy, which is a more general term in the sense that it applies also to solids. In materials science, surface tension is used for either surface stress or surface energy. Topic. Causes Due to the cohesive forces a molecule is pulled equally in every direction by neighboring liquid molecules, resulting in a net force of zero. The molecules at the surface do not have the same molecules on all sides of them and therefore are pulled inward. This creates some internal pressure and forces liquid surfaces to contract to the minimum area. The forces of attraction acting between the molecules of same type are called cohesive forces while those acting between the molecules of different types are called adhesive forces. When cohesive forces are stronger than adhesive forces, the liquid acquires a convex meniscus as mercury in a glass container. On the other hand, when adhesive forces are stronger, the surface of the liquid curves up as water in a glass. Surface tension is responsible for the shape of liquid droplets. Although easily deformed, droplets of water tend to be pulled into a spherical shape by the imbalance in cohesive forces of the surface layer. In the absence of other forces, including gravity, drops of virtually all liquids would be approximately spherical. The spherical shape minimizes the necessary wall tension of the surface layer according to Laplace's law. Another way to view surface tension is in terms of energy. A molecule in contact with a neighbor is in a lower state of energy than if it were alone, not in contact with a neighbor. The interior molecules have as many neighbors as they can possibly have, but the boundary molecules are missing neighbors compared to interior molecules and therefore have a higher energy. For the liquid to minimize its energy state, the number of higher energy boundary molecules must be minimized. The minimized number of boundary molecules results in a minimal surface area. As a result of surface area minimization, a surface will assume the smoothest shape it can mathematical proof that smooth shapes minimize surface area relies on use of the Euler-Lagrange equation. Since any curvature in the surface shape results in greater area, a higher energy will also result. Consequently, the surface will push back against any curvature in much the same way as a ball pushed uphill will push back to minimize its gravitational potential energy. Topic. Effects of surface tension Topic. Water Several effects of surface tension can be seen with ordinary water. Topic. Surfactants Surface tension is visible in other common phenomena, especially when surfactants are used to decrease it. Soap bubbles have very large surface areas with very little mass. Bubbles in pure water are unstable. The addition of surfactants, however, can have a stabilizing effect on the bubbles see Marangoni effect. Note that surfactants actually reduce the surface tension of water by a factor of three or more. Emulsions are a type of colloid in which surface tension plays a role. Tiny fragments of oil suspended in pure water will spontaneously assemble themselves into much larger masses. But the presence of a surfactant provides a decrease in surface tension, which permits stability of minute droplets of oil in the bulk of water, or vice versa. Topic. 
Topic: Physics. Topic: Physical units. Surface tension, represented by the symbol gamma, alternatively sigma or T, is measured in force per unit length. Its SI unit is newton per meter, but the CGS unit of dyne per centimeter is also used. For example, gamma equals one d y n c m equals one. E R G C M two equals one ten minus seven M N ten minus four M two equals zero point oh oh one N M equals zero point oh oh one J M two Display style gamma equals one tilde mathrum frac dyne cm equals one tilde mathrum frac erg cm carrot two equals one tilde mathrum frac ten carrot minus seven m c dot n ten carrot minus four m carrot two equals zero point oh oh one tilde mathrum frac n m equals zero point oh oh one tilde mathrum frac j m carrot two topic Surface area growth Surface tension can be defined in terms of force or energy. In terms of force, surface tension gamma of a liquid is the force per unit length. In the illustration on the right, the rectangular frame, composed of three unmovable sides black, that form a U shape, and a fourth movable side blue, that can slide to the right. Surface tension will pull the blue bar to the left. The force F required to hold the immobile side is proportional to the length L of the movable side. Thus the ratio F L depends only on the intrinsic properties of the liquid, composition, temperature, etc., not on its geometry. For example, if the frame had a more complicated shape, the ratio F L with L the length of the movable side and F the force required to stop it from sliding is found to be the same for all shapes. We therefore define the surface tension as gamma equals one two F L Display style gamma equals frac one two frac F L The reason for the one half is that the film has two sides, each of which contributes equally to the force, so the force contributed by a single side is gamma L equals F two. In terms of energy, surface tension gamma of a liquid is the ratio of the change in the energy of the liquid, and the change in the surface area of the liquid, that led to the change in energy. This can be easily related to the previous definition in terms of force, if F is the force required to stop the side from starting to slide, then this is also the force that would keep the side in the state of sliding at a constant speed by Newton's second law. But if the side is moving to the right in the direction the force is applied, then the surface area of the stretched liquid is increasing while the applied force is doing work on the liquid. This means that increasing the surface area increases the energy of the film. The work done by the force F in moving the side by distance delta X is W. Topic. F delta X, at the same time the total area of the film increases by delta A. 2L delta X the factor of 2 is here because the liquid has two sides, two surfaces. Thus, multiplying both the numerator and the denominator of gamma equals one half F, L by delta X, we get gamma equals F 2 L equals F delta X 2 L Delta X equals W Delta A 
Display style gamma equals frac f two L equals frac f delta x two L delta x equals frac W delta. This work W is, by the usual arguments, interpreted as being stored as potential energy. Consequently, surface tension can be also measured in SI system as joules per square meter and in the CGS system as ergs per square centimeter. Since mechanical systems try to find a state of minimum potential energy, a free droplet of liquid naturally assumes a spherical shape, which has the minimum surface area for a given volume. The equivalence of measurement of energy per unit area to force per unit length can be proven by dimensional analysis. Topic. Surface curvature and pressure If no force acts normal to a tension surface, the surface must remain flat. But if the pressure on one side of the surface differs from pressure on the other side, the pressure difference times surface area results in a normal force. In order for the surface tension forces to cancel the force due to pressure, the surface must be curved. The diagram shows how surface curvature of a tiny patch of surface leads to a net component of surface tension forces acting normal to the center of the patch. When all the forces are balanced, the resulting equation is known as the Young-Laplace equation. Delta P equals gamma 1 R X plus 1 R Y Display style delta p equals gamma left frac one r underscore x plus frac one r underscore y right, where delta p is the pressure difference, known as the Laplace pressure. Gamma is surface tension. R x and r are radii of curvature in each of the axes that are parallel to the surface. The quantity in parentheses on the right-hand side is in fact twice the mean curvature of the surface, depending on normalization. Solutions to this equation determine the shape of water drops, puddles, menisci, soap bubbles, and all other shapes determined by surface tension such as the shape of the impressions that a water strider's feet make on the surface of a pond. The table below shows how the internal pressure of a water droplet increases with decreasing radius. For not very small drops the effect is subtle, but the pressure difference becomes enormous when the drop sizes approach the molecular size. In the limit of a single molecule the concept becomes meaningless. Topic. Floating objects When an object is placed on a liquid, its weight Fw depresses the surface, and if surface tension and downward force becomes equal then is balanced by the surface tension forces on either side Fs, which are each parallel to the water's surface at the points where it contacts the object. Notice that small movement in the body may cause the object to sink. As the angle of contact decreases surface tension decreases the horizontal components of the two F's arrows point in opposite directions, so they cancel each other, but the vertical components point in the same direction and therefore add up to balance Fw. The object's surface must not be wettable for this to happen, and its weight must be low enough for the surface tension to support it. F W equals 2 f s cos theta rho w a w l g equals 2 gamma l cos theta Display style f underscore mathrm w equals two f underscore mathrm s cos theta quad left right arrow quad rho underscore mathrm w a underscore mathrm w l g equals two gamma l cos theta. Topic: Liquid surface. To find the shape of the minimal surface bounded by some arbitrary shaped frame using strictly mathematical means can be a daunting task. Yet by fashioning the frame out of wire and dipping it in soap solution, a locally minimal surface will appear in the resulting soap film within seconds. The reason for this is that the pressure difference across a fluid interface is proportional to the mean curvature, as seen in the Young-Laplace equation. 
For an open soap film, the pressure difference is zero, hence the mean curvature is zero, and minimal surfaces have the property of zero mean curvature. Topic. Contact angles The surface of any liquid is a interface between that liquid and some other medium. The top surface of a pond, for example, is an interface between the pond water and the air. Surface tension, then, is not a property of the liquid alone, but a property of the liquid's interface with another medium. If the liquid is in a container, then besides the liquid-air interface at its top surface, there is also an interface between the liquid and the walls of the container. The surface tension between the liquid and air is usually different, greater than, its surface tension with the walls of a container. And where the two surfaces meet, the geometry must be such that all forces balance. Where the two surfaces meet, they form a contact angle, theta, which is the angle the tangent to the surface makes with the solid surface. Note that the angle is measured through the liquid, as shown in the diagrams above. The diagram to the right shows two examples. Tension forces are shown for the liquid-air interface, the liquid-solid interface, and the solid-air interface. The example on the left is where the difference between the liquid-solid and solid-air surface tension, gamma ls minus gamma sa, is less than the liquid-air surface tension, gamma l, but is nevertheless positive, that is, gamma l a greater than gamma l s minus gamma s a greater than zero display style gamma underscore mathrm l greater than gamma underscore mathrm l s gamma underscore mathrm s a greater than zero in the diagram, both the vertical and horizontal forces must cancel exactly at the contact point, known as equilibrium. The horizontal component of FLA is cancelled by the adhesive force, F A F A equals F L A sin theta Display style F underscore mathrum A equals F underscore mathrum le sin theta the more telling balance of forces, though, is in the vertical direction. The vertical component of FLA must exactly cancel the difference of the forces along the solid surface, FLS minus FSA. F L S minus F S A equals minus F L A cos theta display style f underscore mathrm ls f underscore mathrm sa equals f underscore mathrm le cos theta since the forces are in direct proportion to their respective surface tensions we also have gamma l s minus gamma s a equals minus gamma l a cos theta display style gamma underscore mathrm ls gamma underscore mathrm sa equals gamma underscore mathrm le cos theta where gamma ls is the liquid solid surface tension gamma le is the liquid air surface tension gamma sa is the solid air surface tension Theta is the contact angle, where a concave meniscus has contact angle less than 90 degrees and a convex meniscus has contact angle of greater than 90 degrees. This means that although the difference between the liquid solid and solid air surface tension, gamma ls minus gamma sa, is difficult to measure directly, it can be inferred from the liquid air surface tension, gamma le, and the equilibrium contact angle, theta, which is a function of the easily measurable advancing and receding contact angles. See main article contact angle. This same relationship exists in the diagram on the right. But in this case we see that because the contact angle is less than 90 degrees, the liquid-solid, solid-air surface tension difference must be negative. Gamma L A greater than 0 greater than gamma L S minus gamma S a 
Display style gamma underscore mathrum le greater than zero greater than gamma underscore mathrum ls gamma underscore mathrum sa. Topic: Special contact angles. Observe that in the special case of a water-silver interface where the contact angle is equal to 90 degrees, the liquid-solid, solid-air surface tension difference is exactly zero. Another special case is where the contact angle is exactly 180 degrees. Water with specially prepared Teflon approaches this. Contact angle of 180 degrees occurs when the liquid-solid surface tension is exactly equal to the liquid-air surface tension. Gamma L A equals gamma L S minus gamma S A greater than zero theta equals one hundred and eighty Display style gamma underscore mathrum le equals gamma underscore mathrum ls gamma underscore mathrum sa greater than zero q quad theta equals one hundred and eighty carat circ. Topic Methods of measurement Because surface tension manifests itself in various effects, it offers a number of paths to its measurement. Which method is optimal depends upon the nature of the liquid being measured, the conditions under which its tension is to be measured, and the stability of its surface when it is deformed. Dunoy ring method, the traditional method used to measure surface or interfacial tension. Wetting properties of the surface or interface have little influence on this measuring technique. Maximum pull exerted on the ring by the surface is measured. Dunoy Pade method, a minimized version of Dunoy method uses a small diameter metal needle instead of a ring, in combination with a high sensitivity microbalance to record maximum pull. The advantage of this method is that very small sample volumes down to few tens of microliters can be measured with very high precision, without the need to correct for buoyancy for a needle or rather, rod, with proper geometry. Further, the measurement can be performed very quickly, minimally in about 20 seconds. First commercial multi-channel tensiometers C. were recently built based on this principle. Wilhelmi plate method, a universal method especially suited to check surface tension over long time intervals. A vertical plate of known perimeter is attached to a balance, and the force due to wetting is measured. Spinning drop method, this technique is ideal for measuring low interfacial tensions. The diameter of a drop within a heavy phase is measured while both are rotated. Pendant drop method, surface and interfacial tension can be measured by this technique, even at elevated temperatures and pressures. Geometry of a drop is analyzed optically. For pendant drops the maximum diameter and the ratio between this parameter and the diameter at the distance of the maximum diameter from the drop apex has been used to evaluate the size and shape parameters in order to determine surface tension. Bubble pressure method, Jaeger's method, a measurement technique for determining surface tension at short surface ages. Maximum pressure of each bubble is measured. Drop volume method, a method for determining interfacial tension as a function of interface age. Liquid of one density is pumped into a second liquid of a different density and time between drops produced is measured. Capillary rise method, the end of a capillary is immersed into the solution. The height at which the solution reaches inside the capillary is related to the surface tension by the equation discussed below. Stalagmometric method, a method of weighting and reading a drop of liquid. Cecile drop method, a method for determining surface tension and density by placing a drop on a substrate and measuring the contact angle see Cecile drop technique. Vibrational frequency of levitated drops, the natural frequency of vibrational oscillations of magnetically levitated drops has been used to measure the surface tension of superfluid Forhe. This value is estimated to be 0.375 dyne per centimeter at T equals 0 K. Resonant oscillations of spherical and hemispherical liquid drop, the technique is based on measuring the resonant frequency of spherical and hemispherical pendant droplets driven in oscillations by a modulated electric field. The surface tension and viscosity can be evaluated from the obtained resonant curves. Topic: Effects. Topic: 
Topic: <laughs> Liquid in a vertical tube. An old-style mercury barometer consists of a vertical glass tube about 1 cm in diameter partially filled with mercury, and with a vacuum called Torricelli's vacuum in the unfilled volume see diagram to the right. Notice that the mercury level at the center of the tube is higher than at the edges, making the upper surface of the mercury dome shaped. The center of mass of the entire column of mercury would be slightly lower if the top surface of the mercury were flat over the entire cross-section of the tube but the dome-shaped top gives slightly less surface area to the entire mass of mercury. Again the two effects combine to minimize the total potential energy. Such a surface shape is known as a convex meniscus. We consider the surface area of the entire mass of mercury, including the part of the surface that is in contact with the glass, because mercury does not adhere to glass at all. So the surface tension of the mercury acts over its entire surface area, including where it is in contact with the glass. If instead of glass, the tube was made out of copper, the situation would be very different. Mercury aggressively adheres to copper. So in a copper tube, the level of mercury at the center of the tube will be lower than at the edges that is, it would be a concave meniscus. In a situation where the liquid adheres to the walls of its container, we consider the part of the fluid's surface area that is in contact with the container to have negative surface tension. The fluid then works to maximize the contact surface area. So in this case increasing the area in contact with the container decreases rather than increases the potential energy. That decrease is enough to compensate for the increased potential energy associated with lifting the fluid near the walls of the container. If a tube is sufficiently narrow and the liquid adhesion to its walls is sufficiently strong, surface tension can draw liquid up the tube in a phenomenon known as capillary action. The height to which the column is lifted is given by Duran's law H equals 2 gamma l a cos theta rho g r display style h equals frac 2 gamma underscore mathrm la cos theta rho g r where h is the height the liquid is lifted gamma la is the liquid air surface tension Rho is the density of the liquid. R is the radius of the capillary. G is the acceleration due to gravity. Theta is the angle of contact described above. If theta is greater than 90 degrees, as with mercury in a glass container, the liquid will be depressed rather than lifted. Topic: <laughs> Puddles on a surface. Pouring mercury onto a horizontal flat sheet of glass results in a puddle that has a perceptible thickness. The puddle will spread out only to the point where it is a little under half a centimeter thick, and no thinner. Again this is due to the action of mercury's strong surface tension. The liquid mass flattens out because that brings as much of the mercury to as low a level as possible, but the surface tension, at the same time, is acting to reduce the total surface area. The result of the compromise is a puddle of a nearly fixed thickness. The same surface tension demonstration can be done with water, lime water or even saline, but only on a surface made of a substance to which water does not adhere. Wax is such a substance. Water poured onto a smooth, flat, horizontal wax surface, say a wax sheet of glass, will behave similarly to the mercury poured onto glass. The thickness of a puddle of liquid on a surface whose contact angle is 180 degrees is given by H equals 2 gamma G rho display style H equals 2 sqrt frac gamma G rho where H is the depth of the puddle in centimeters or meters Gamma is the surface tension of the liquid in dynes per centimeter or newtons per meter. G is the acceleration due to gravity and is equal to 980 centimeters per square second or 9.8 meters per square second. Rho is the density of the liquid in grams per cc or kilograms per cubic meter. In reality, the thicknesses of the puddles will be slightly less than what is predicted by the above formula because very few surfaces have a contact angle of 180 degrees with any liquid. When the contact angle is less than 180 degrees, the thickness is given by H equals 2 gamma 
l a 1 minus cos theta g rho display style h equals sqrt frac 2 gamma underscore mathrm left 1 cos theta right g rho for mercury on glass gamma hg topic 487 dyne per centimeter rho hg 13 5 grams per cc and theta topic 140 degrees which gives hhg 0.36 cm for water on paraffin at 25 degrees celsius gamma topic 72 dyne per centimeter rho 1 0 grams per cc and theta topic 107 degrees which gives hh2o 0.44 cm. The formula also predicts that when the contact angle is 0 degrees, the liquid will spread out into a micro thin layer over the surface. Such a surface is said to be fully wettable by the liquid. Topic: The breakup of streams into drops. In day-to-day -day life all of us observe that a stream of water emerging from a faucet will break up into droplets, no matter how smoothly the stream is emitted from the faucet. This is due to a phenomenon called the Plateau-Rayleigh instability, which is entirely a consequence of the effects of surface tension. The explanation of this instability begins with the existence of tiny perturbations in the stream. These are always present, no matter how smooth the stream is. If the perturbations are resolved into sinusoidal components, we find that some components grow with time while others decay with time. Among those that grow with time, some grow at faster rates than others. Whether a component decays or grows, and how fast it grows is entirely a function of its wave number a measure of how many peaks and troughs per centimeter and the radii of the original cylindrical stream. Topic. Thermodynamics Topic Thermodynamic theories of surface tension J.W. Gibbs developed the thermodynamic theory of capillarity based on the idea of surfaces of discontinuity. He introduced and studied thermodynamics of two-dimensional objects, surfaces. These surfaces have area, mass, entropy, energy and free energy. As stated above, the mechanical work needed to increase a surface area A is dW equals gamma da. Hence at constant temperature and pressure, surface tension equals Gibbs free energy per surface area, gamma equals G A T P N display style gamma equals left frac partial G partial at right underscore T P N where G is Gibbs free energy and A is the area. Thermodynamics requires that all spontaneous changes of state are accompanied by a decrease in Gibbs free energy. From this it is easy to understand why decreasing the surface area of a mass of liquid is always spontaneous. G Gibbs free energy is defined by the equation G equals H minus Ts, where H is enthalpy and S is entropy. Based upon this and the fact that surface tension is Gibbs free energy per unit area, it is possible to obtain the following expression for entropy per unit area: gamma T A P equals minus S A display style left frac partial gamma partial T right underscore A P equals S caret A. Kelvin's equation for surfaces arises by rearranging the previous equations. It states that surface enthalpy or surface energy different from surface free energy depends both on surface tension and its derivative with temperature at constant pressure by the relationship H A equals gamma minus T gamma T P Display style h caret a equals gamma t left frac partial gamma partial t right underscore p. 
15 years after Gibbs, J. D. van der Waals developed the theory of capillarity effects based on the hypothesis of a continuous variation of density. He added to the energy density the term C rho 2 display style C nabla rho caret 2 where C is the capillarity coefficient and rho is the density. For the multiphase equilibria, the results of the van der Waals approach practically coincide with the Gibbs formulae, but for modeling of the dynamics of phase transitions the van der Waals approach is much more convenient. The van der Waals capillarity energy is now widely used in the phase field models of multiphase flows. Such terms are also discovered in the dynamics of non-equilibrium gases. Topic. Thermodynamics of soap bubbles The pressure inside an ideal one surface soap bubble can be derived from thermodynamic free energy considerations. At constant temperature and particle number dt. Topic. dn Zero, the differential Helmholtz energy is given by d f equals minus p d v plus gamma d a display style df equals p dv plus gamma da where p is the difference in pressure inside and outside of the bubble and gamma is the surface tension in equilibrium df equals 0 and so p D V equals gamma D A display style P D V equals gamma da for a spherical bubble the volume and surface area are given simply by V equals four three pi R three D V approximately equals 4 pi r 2 d r display style v equals tfrac 4 3 pi r caret 3 quad right arrow quad dv approximately 4 pi r caret 2 doctor and a equals 4 pi r 2 d a approximately equals 8 pi r d r display style equals 4 pi r caret 2 quad right arrow quad da approximately 8 pi r doctor substituting these relations into the previous expression we find p equals 2 R gamma display style p equals frac 2 r gamma, which is equivalent to the Young-Laplace equation when r x equals r. For real soap bubbles, the pressure is doubled due to the presence of two interfaces, one inside and one outside. Equals. Topic: Influence of temperature. Equals surface tension is dependent on temperature. For that reason, when a value is given for the surface tension of an interface, temperature must be explicitly stated. The general trend is that surface tension decreases with the increase of temperature, reaching a value of zero at the critical temperature. For further details see Eothvos rule. There are only empirical equations to relate surface tension and temperature. Eothvos gamma v 2 3 equals k t c minus t display style gamma v caret frac 2 3 equals k t underscore mathrm c t here v is the molar volume of a substance t c is the critical temperature and k is a constant valid for almost all substances a typical value is k Topic. 
2.1 times 10 minus 7 jk minus 1 mole minus 2 thirds. For water, one can further use V. 18 milliliters per mole and TC equals 647 K 374 degrees Celsius. A variant on Eothvos is described by Ramey and Shields. Gamma V 2 3 equals K T C minus T minus 6 Display style gamma v carrot frac two three equals k left t underscore mathrm c t six right, where the temperature offset of six k provides the formula with a better fit to reality at lower temperatures. Guggenheim Katayama gamma equals gamma one minus t t c n Display style gamma equals gamma carrot circ left one frac t t underscore mathrm c right carrot n gamma degree is a constant for each liquid and n is an empirical factor whose value is eleven ninths for organic liquids. This equation was also proposed by Van der Waals, who further proposed that gamma degree could be given by the expression k two t c one 3 p c 2 3 display style k underscore 2 t underscore mathrm c caret frac 1 3 p underscore mathrm c caret frac 2 3 where k2 is a universal constant for all liquids and pc is the critical pressure of the liquid although later experiments found k2 to vary to some degree from one liquid to another both guggenheim katayama and eothvos take into account the fact that surface tension reaches zero at the critical temperature whereas ramey and shields fails to match reality at this endpoint topic <laughs> influence of solute concentration Solutes can have different effects on surface tension depending on the nature of the surface and the solute. Little or no effect, for example sugar at water, air, most organic compounds at oil, air. Increase surface tension, most inorganic salts at water, air. Non-monotonic change, most inorganic acids at water, air. Decrease surface tension progressively, as with most amphiphiles, e.g., alcohols at water, air. Decrease surface tension until certain critical concentration, and no effect afterwards. Surfactants that form micelles. What complicates the effect is that a solute can exist in a different concentration at the surface of a solvent than in its bulk. This difference varies from one solute solvent combination to another. Gibbs isotherm states that gamma equals minus 1 R T gamma lane c t p display style gamma equals frac 1 rt left frac partial gamma partial lane c right underscore t p gamma is known as surface concentration it represents excess of solute per unit area of the surface over what would be present if the bulk concentration prevailed all the way to the surface it has units of mole per square meter C is the concentration of the substance in the bulk solution. R is the gas constant and T the temperature. Certain assumptions are taken in its deduction, therefore Gibbs isotherm can only be applied to ideal very dilute solutions with two components. Topic. Influence of particle size on vapor pressure The clausius clapeyron relation leads to another equation also attributed to Kelvin, as the Kelvin equation. It explains why, because of surface tension, the vapor pressure for small droplets of liquid in suspension is greater than standard vapor pressure of that same liquid when the interface is flat. That is to say that when a liquid is forming small droplets, the equilibrium concentration of its vapor in its surroundings is greater. This arises because the pressure inside the droplet is greater than outside. P V F O 
G equals P V E V two Gamma R T R K Display style P underscore mathram V carrot mathram fog equals P underscore mathram V carrot circ E carrot frac V two gamma RTR underscore mathram K PV degree is the standard vapor pressure for that liquid at that temperature and pressure. V is the molar volume. R is the gas constant. RK is the Kelvin radius, the radius of the droplets. The effect explains supersaturation of vapors. In the absence of nucleation sites, tiny droplets must form before they can evolve into larger droplets. This requires a vapor pressure many times the vapor pressure at the phase transition point. This equation is also used in catalyst chemistry to assess mesoporosity for solids. The effect can be viewed in terms of the average number of molecular neighbors of surface molecules. See diagram. The table shows some calculated values of this effect for water at different drop sizes. The effect becomes clear for very small drop sizes, as a drop of 1 nanometer radius has about 100 molecules inside, which is a quantity small enough to require a quantum mechanics analysis. <laughs> <laughs> Surface tension of water and of seawater The two most abundant liquids on the Earth are fresh water and seawater. This section gives correlations of reference data for the surface tension of both. Topic: Surface tension of water. The surface tension of pure liquid water in contact with its vapor has been given by IAPWS as gamma W equals 235.8 1 minus t t c 1.256 1 minus 0 0.625 1 minus t t c millinewton per meter Display style gamma underscore text W equals two hundred and thirty five point eight left one frac T T underscore text C right carrot one point two five six left one to zero point six two five left one frac T T underscore text C right right tilde text millinewton per meter where both T and the critical temperature TC equals six hundred and forty seven point oh nine six K are expressed in Kelvins. The region of validity the entire vapor liquid saturation curve, from the triple point 0.01 degrees Celsius to the critical point. It also provides reasonable results when extrapolated to metastable supercooled conditions, down to at least minus 25 degrees Celsius. This formulation was originally adopted by IAPWS in 1976 and was adjusted in 1994 to conform to the International Temperature Scale of 1990. The uncertainty of this formulation is given over the full range of temperature by IAPWS. For temperatures below 100 degrees Celsius, the uncertainty is plus or minus 0.5%. <laughs> Surface tension of seawater Mayer et al. published reference data for the surface tension of seawater over the salinity range of 20 s 131 grams per kilogram and a temperature range of 1 t 92 degrees Celsius at atmospheric pressure. The uncertainty of the measurements varied from 0.18 to 0.37 mN per meter with the average uncertainty being 0.22 mN per meter. This data is correlated by the following equation. Gamma s W equals gamma W one plus three point seven six six times ten minus four S plus two point three four seven times ten minus six 
S T Display style gamma underscore mathrm S W equals gamma underscore mathrm W left one plus three point seven six six times ten carat minus four S plus two point three four seven times ten carat minus six street right where gamma S W is the surface tension of seawater in millinewton per meter, gamma W is the surface tension of water in millinewton per meter, S is the reference salinity in gram per kilogram, and T is temperature in degrees Celsius. The average absolute percentage deviation between measurements and the correlation was 0.19% while the maximum deviation is 0.60%. The range of temperature and salinity encompasses both the oceanographic range and the range of conditions encountered in thermal desalination technologies. Topic: <laughs> Data table. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Gallery of effects. See also equals equals notes. <laughs>